like it. It looks normal. Oh, oh yeah. I know how that goes with hair. Don't worry. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Oh, hey everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. For the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be featuring so many raw food vegan chefs from all over the globe. They are part of the Ultimate Raw Vegan Bundle, which I will link to in the show notes and also in the chat. And they're going to be making recipes from their brand new books. And today, it is my pleasure to introduce Jade Turnquist, and she's going to be making a raw apple pie. Welcome to the show, Jade. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Well, you've got an accent, that's for sure. So um, you want to tell everybody where you're from? Yeah, it always makes me laugh when people say I've got an accent because I don't realize I have an accent until somebody tells me I have an accent. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) um, I'm from Australia. Um, I haven't lived in Australia for nearly five years. Um, I was living in Vietnam but now I'm over here in Mexico. Um, so we've just had a bit of a change um, due to strict lockdowns in Vietnam. I um, had to escape and I couldn't get into back into Australia. So I'm in Mexico. <laughs> well, there, uh, uh, you know, Aust- uh, Australia is nowhere near Mexico last time I checked. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it sure isn't. <laughs> Wow. It sure is. And it's so, a hard time. <laughs> that's so interesting because you, you're all these different countries. Are you able to maintain your raw vegan diet wherever you are? You certainly can. And look, that's the amazing thing today. I'm going to show, I'm in a tiny little place at the moment, and I'm going to show people that you can make raw food anywhere you go. I mean, that's a great thing. Um, I received a message from my son yesterday, who's 25. And um, he said to me, Mum, do they have vegan food in Mexico? And I said, yeah, they sure do. Fruits and vegetables are everywhere. So, yeah, you can make raw food wherever you are, wherever you go. Um, Sometimes it's a little hard on a plane or something like that. You know, you've got to think ahead. Well, how long have you been following a raw vegan diet? Were you regular vegan first? Um, Yeah, I was. About eight years ago, I became a regular vegan. Um, Back in the day of the raw till four boom, um, when Freely the Banana Girl was huge and everybody got on that train and um, was following raw till four back then. And, um, and, And I sort of, I really became vegan more for an ethical reason too. My daughter, um, talked about it she made us watch earthlings after that we were in japan when she made us watch earthlings kind of ruined our restaurant (laughs) trips but um so we became vegan um overnight and um i've been vegan ever since and um then i became a raw vegan more for uh more just because i enjoyed it um i'm not a strict raw vegan i do openly admit I include sometimes cooked food in my life, um, but predominantly I eat raw. Nice, nice. So you were able to do this in Vietnam, in Australia, and now in Mexico. Is there any difference being in different countries, how easy or hard it is? Well, it depends what you want to make. I mean, if you if you're just eating normal fruit, obviously there's different produce available in different countries at different time and different costs. Cheapest place is Vietnam if you want to eat <laughs> lots of fruit. It's very cheap um, for fruits on a Western perspective anyway. Um, but uh, not really. I mean, you sort of, when you want to make certain recipes and whatever, you may struggle because you can't get that ingredient or whatever. But I've learned over the years, I don't get strict on the ingredients that are in a recipe. And I see it quite often with people. They say, oh, I can't make this. I can't. I can't get that food or whatever, but I've learned over the years if I want to make things um, and I can't always get everything that's, especially in a country like America or Australia where you have the availability of everything. Um, I've learned that I just have to substitute. If I can't get this, I'll get that instead. Like if I can't get dried dates, I might use dried figs or whatever it is that I can get at the time. Right. So what made you take the leap from regular veganism to raw Mm -hmm. veganism? um well it was more I I got into Instagram and I openly admit I'm not a tech savvy person and 
I was learning the hashtags. I mean, this is going back eight years ago and I saw 801010 and I had no idea what it was. And I was clicking on the 801010 hashtags and then all of a sudden I'm seeing all these people with photos with pineapples and big watermelons and, you know, all of that. And I'm like, oh, this looks a bit interesting. So I read the 801010 book by Dr. Douglas Graham and um, I really... I just, I found I felt really good when I ate this way. So it just sort of steamrolled from there and it became a big part of my life. And every time that I've sort of fallen off the rails, I've gone back to it again because I'm like, I know that's where I feel my best. So it's just, yeah, it's just became a big part of my life over the last eight years, eating raw. Is, is other family members joined you? Sometimes. Um, well, uh, <laughs> my daughter, when I started eating like this, this is, I was living, she was still living at home then. She doesn't now, she's married. Um, she said to me, I'm not, not, I'm not eating like that. And she's vegan. She said, I like my potatoes, <laughs> you know, which I agree. I understand totally. And, um, but, you know, people will eat my food for sure. Like they don't eat like it all the time, but they would definitely, if I make stuff, I'll, they'll eat it and they'll enjoy it and they like fruit. I mean, who doesn't like fruit? I, I agree. Who doesn't like fruit? But yet a lot of people think fruit is causes diabetes, you know, so there are a lot of people that don't eat fruit. Absolutely. And that always makes me really sad when I, I see that um, I run a raw vegan group. And we get new people in all the time. And then we have people say, I can't eat like that because oh, if I ate that much sugar, I'm going to have the worst diabetes. It's going to be really bad for my diabetes, blah, blah, blah. And um, that's not the case at all. People don't realise if they keep their fat low, they're not going to have those um, blood spikes and their diabetes. And, um, you know, carbohydrates are what, are, what fuels our body. Uh, we run on carbohydrates. and um, if they put more fruit in their diet, and obviously if they get their fat low and didn't consume all the junk food and everything else with it, they'll find they won't be having the blood spikes from the fruit. But people want to always blame the fruit. Yeah, isn't that crazy? Because that's like uh, the one food you can really eat just as it is. It's the easiest food. I mean, especially when I'm traveling, I love that I eat a lot of fruit because like when we came over here, it was 40 hours of traveling because planes and airports are all crazy at the moment, as we know, um, the world's a bit crazy. <laughs> and it was 40 hours of traveling. I'm thinking, oh my goodness, but I could pack a heap of mandarins and apples because they don't spoil easy in my bag. I was like, thank God I eat this way because it's so easy. I mean, I wouldn't have, you, you can't all of a sudden bring a cooking pot with you and start cooking. So it's just the great thing about fruit. Wow. What do you eat? Can you, what, mind telling us like what, what a day's worth of food might look like for you? Whew. Okay. It may seem a little bit overwhelming to some people because people think, oh, my goodness, I can't eat that much. But generally, um, I get up in the morning. I like to have a juice, usually um, a green juice um, predominantly, not so much at the moment I'm in Mexico because I haven't got all the equipment with me. Um, but I like to wake up, have a juice. A bit later um, in the day, I will, when I say later, maybe 8 o'clock, I'm an early riser, I wake about 5 in the morning. Um I might have maybe half a pineapple and half a like a large papaya. Uh, then um, for lunch, I might have maybe five or six bananas, about three medjool dates. Um, and I'll probably have that with some like alfalfa sprouts or some spinach, like raw spinach or some celery or something like that. Um, Mid-afternoon, sometimes I get hungry. If I'm hungry, I might have an apple and some raspberries or something like that. And then for dinner, I usually have a monster-sized salad with um, a dressing that I generally make. Um, I've got hundreds of recipes because obviously I get the copy of the <laughs> raw vegan bundle. Um, but I, I generally, a lot of time I wing it and it's just you know, whatever goes and that's going into my salad. So that's pretty much a day. 
I know that's part, that's one of the best parts about being a contributor to the Raw Vegan Bundle is we get everybody else's books and it's phenomenal. So guys, if you haven't checked it out, click the link because you get over 50 books and programs. So it's less than a dollar per book. Which book did you contribute this time? Yes, I um, created the Rawesome Reset and it's got a seven day meal plan in there. But I didn't want to just put a seven-day meal plan in and just nothing else. So every day when you open it up, you have your menu plan, you've got your shopping plan, and there's also like a tip or trick sort of thing, like, you know, a raw vegan tip or trick, something to help you throughout the day as well as a positive affirmation to go with it. And it's just really sort of designed for people who really want want to clear their body out and... um, sustain this lifestyle or a high high raw lifestyle or even if it's just a whole foods lifestyle if they want to rid themselves of junk food and stuff like that it's a it's it's good it's filling you will not get hungry throughout the day it's low fat it's actually more than low fat there's no nuts no seeds no avocado um no oil nothing in any of our um in my recipes uh that's it's something somebody that, that people have been asking me for a long time can i have a menu plan i need a menu plan with no nuts or seeds so none of that's in there either yeah that's great I, what i love about the the, the new uh, slew of raw fooders i'm meeting as opposed to the ones i knew let's see how many years ago was it over 20 years ago at raw culinary school is that they have the low fat piece of the equation yeah, definitely. That's it's a huge thing. And this whole bundle, uh, this is the one thing I do like, is all the recipes in there are low, low fat, which is awesome as well. Right. So we have a question from Mandy, who actually is living in Australia and wants to know, what's your best piece of advice for somebody that's just starting out or wants to start out on a low fat raw vegan journey? Uh, my greatest advice for anybody is ensure you eat enough. The number one reason people fail on a raw vegan diet is they under eat. I see people with bowls like this size, really small, with a small amount of fruit, and they're having like a salad for lunch with no carbohydrates added with it. And then by dinner, they're eating the legs off the table because they've under eaten. So that's first and foremost what I would advise anybody is to ensure you eat enough. And as well as that, don't get too wrapped up on everything you see on social media because most people will um, photograph the fruit that's seasonal for them. So if you see somebody living in the tropics and they're photographing dragon fruits and papayas and things like that, and they're eating it really cheap, like I used to from Vietnam, and people say, oh, I can't afford to eat like that. And I say, neither can I in Australia. Like dragon fruits are about $30 a kilo in Australia. So don't get wrapped up on absolutely everything you see. Buy the fruit that's seasonal and affordable for you because, one, it's going to be the most nutritional um, produce, but, two, you're going to make this lifestyle affordable and sustainable because if you break your food budget in a day, then you're not going to get through the rest of the week eating. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I'm, I was reading your bio, which I'm putting in the show notes now. If people want to hop on over and look under the video on YouTube, it says you're a certified family family counselor, a nutritionist, and a detox specialist. What does that mean? <laughs> well, um, I'm a counselor. I am a family counselor. Well, I'm a certified as a family counselor, but predominantly most of the counseling I have done over the years is nutritional, weight loss, and people coming off drug and alcohol addictions. So that's predominantly the main, um, my main counselling skills. Um, I like to work with um, people who have addictive personalities. Um, and I've learned that from my own experience too. <laughs> I've got plenty of addictive traits. <laughs> That's and, interesting because I, I, I find that that's very frustrating sometimes to work with people with addictions. Well, it can be. I think for me, because I have done it so much over the years, um, it's something I relate to myself personally. It can be frustrating. Um, years ago, I used to get really frustrated because I wanted to fix everybody. And I realized you can't fix people. Um, you need to... Uh, you know, you need to accept that if people aren't ready to change their lives, they're not going to 
they're not going to be ready. And as you know um, yourself, AJ, everything's about your mindset and getting your mind right and being, in, you know, if you don't have that mindset right, you're not going to be able to put um, the skills and the tools in place to um, be able to get your life where you want it to be. And I don't get frustrated anymore because I've realised I can only give people the tools and um, I can guide them and help them. If they don't take take them, then they, it's it's when they're ready. And when they're ready, they might come back later and say, hey, you know what, maybe I'm ready to do this now. So I don't get so frustrated these days. Great. I saw a question. Um, Victoria says, should we count calories to make sure that we are eating enough? Um, now, that's a good question. Now, that's a, it's a very controversial topic within the vegan and the raw vegan movement, the calories. Now, I, I'm not, I don't tell anybody um, that you should be counting calories every day because nobody wants to be attached to a calorie counter. However, if you are starting out as a raw vegan and you have no idea of nutritional values or the calories of something, I would suggest just to get an idea to make sure you're eating enough because if you think that two bananas, two apples and a bowl of strawberries and a little token salad is going to cut it for the day, you're going to be very hungry in about two, two, or two days' time. You're going to be eating, I call it Pac-Man disease. You eat everything out that, um, that's in your household. But if you get an idea of the values of things, you can sort of work it out, yeah, okay, that's enough food. Obviously, you don't always have to eat everything that you serve. In saying that, when you're long-term eating a lot of volume, your body does get used to eating a lot of volume. So it might seem overwhelming at first when you make these big bowls of fruit and suddenly think, oh, my God, how am I going to get through that? But once you get used to it, then your body will adjust. Yep, I agree. Let's see. I saw another question uh, from Deborah, do you eat more vegetables than fruit or do you eat 50, 50? And I guess she means maybe you personally, and maybe one, one trying to do this. Ah, that's a good question. Um, when you say 50, 50, like the Dr. McDougal 50, 50 plate. Um, or maybe she means, cause I, I, it would be hard to get 50% of your calories from vegetables though, because that's, they're so low and you know, they're so calorically dilute, yeah. you know? Yeah, maybe, look, if you're talking about like a 50-50 plate, I've quite often done that. I'll have half my plate like with salad and uh, whatever, and then, but I will still make sure I have like a heap of bananas or a heap of apples or dates or a big smoothie bowl or whatever. Um, but definitely um, I would eat more fruit. My diet would predominantly be 90% fruit, Um and then 10% um, vegetables. I do try to eat one to two pounds of greens a day. I, I think it's very important to ensure that your body gets um, the minerals, um, essential minerals and nutrition. Plus, I find if I'm not eating greens during the day, I'm very hungry and I can't satiate myself all day. So I do eat a lot of greens and sprouts and microgreens also. Nice. Yeah. I find, yeah, it's, it's great. Vegetables, I think also help with cravings. Yeah. Oh, definitely. If I didn't eat them, I would, I would just, I mean, I, I've got a long history of binge eating and I know if I don't eat these things, I will end up binge eating. So it's important for me to make sure because I don't like finishing a day with a binge. No one likes that feeling that we go through when we do that. Absolutely. Let's see if there's any more questions. And is this your first time contributing to the Raw Vegan Bundle or were you in the last one? I was in the last one as well. Yeah. Which book did you, I probably have your book because I was in the last one too. What book did you have? Last um, I had a dips and dressing, a sauce, sauce delicious dips and dressing book last time. And um, I still have that sauce delicious book. It's for sale in my shop. If anybody's interested, I've got four sauce delicious books. But um, this time I wanted to put more a menu plan and together and more structure for people um, just because I think it's it's important for people to get an understanding even if they don't completely um, follow a menu, the menu plan it really showcases just how much you should be eating so if you're new to this life so you can look and so, ah, I got it. I understand now because I know when I first started years ago the first time I tried to be raw I, I didn't make it to lunchtime um, <laughs> So that 
they didn't have all the stuff out back then. I mean, you, not like these days. Uh, all the YouTube videos and the books and everything else you get, it's a lot easier. Absolutely. Are there any must-have pieces of equipment that you recommend for somebody on their raw food journey? You need a high-speed blender. Um, I've taken mine with me, even the Mexico. I do love having a dehydrator. However, I've left my Excalibur dehydrator in Vietnam. Um, I'll pick it up when I can get back in there at a later date. Um, but that's not essential. Essential, yes, a blender. In saying that, look, you, you can eat raw with just a picking up fruit or a knife or whatever, but I think a blender definitely it and a high speed blender. If you're just using like a, you know, a sunbeam one like from Kmart, that's not going to, you won't get the nice smoothness in your dips and dressings and things like that. Yeah, I, I agree. And, and you know, it's amazing because I remember 20 years ago, they were like seven, $800. They're only, you can get them for a couple of hundred now, which really compared to prices of yesteryear is not horrible. Yeah, it makes a huge difference um, having them. And now that they're a lot more affordable, it makes it easier for people. And I know a lot of people in my groups, I don't know what, what goes on in the thrift shops in America, but you guys have some good stuff in those thrift shops. They, they tell me that they've picked up um, Vitamixes and stuff for like $1 and $2. I don't know. We don't have thrift shops that good in um, Australia. Well, that's what I say. Like if people want a dehydrator, look at a garage sale or on eBay, because a lot of people buy these things and then they, they don't use them. Yeah. Or Marketplace now is a good place too. I've been checking out Marketplace for if and when I ever get home to Australia. It'll happen. Oh, oh my <laughs> goodness. That, so what do you do? How do you spend your time now? You mean so far away from home? Uh, well, when I was in Vietnam, I was teaching English as a second language. And that was wonderful. Um, and that kept me really busy because um, Vietnamese don't know how to not work. They just work. And they can't understand when you say, no, I want to not work today. Uh, no, we need work, work, work. So I did. A, I was very busy there. Um, over here, I've just been working on online, um, selling my e-books, uh, doing nutritional health coaching. Um, and... Twiddly my thumbs. <laughs> yeah. That's, but, that's funny. Do you, <laughs> are there any like farmer's markets or anything where you're, where you're living now? Well, um, they, I went to a market the other day, which was quite good. And that was by a freak of nature. I found it. Um, I'm planning on going to Porta Vallada next month. So I'm hoping I can find more things than around here. Cancun's just really big. It just... I find it quite big and overwhelming, um, I guess because I was in a smaller town in Vietnam and I drove my little scooter and everywhere you went, there was just people selling fruit and vegetables on the street. And I thought it might've been the same thing here, but it's very um, westernized in Cancun, I find. So um, anyway, they've got Walmarts here and all those kind of things. Really? Oh, wow. I, I just got back from teaching in Mexico, but there were no Walmarts or Costco's or any of those stores. I was in Tecate. Ah, so it's a smaller town there. Is it? I believe so. Yep. Yeah. I, I like small towns. You, that's where you meet the real people, I think. Nice. Uh, Stephanie says, doesn't blending decrease or change the nutrient value from the whole unblended form? Well, look, um, a lot of people talk about that because, I mean, fruit and vegetables, when you start blending them, they oxidise. And, um, of, of course, the, you know, as we change the structure of something, nothing beats something in its whole form. But it's 2021 and we are all busy people and a lot of times you can't get enough food in. Like if you're in a rush to go to work in the morning and all of a sudden you're looking at eight bananas or whatever it is that you're planning to have, it's a lot easier to throw them in the blender and sort of slurp it down to get it down and ensure that your body gets what it needs in, instead of saying, I've got to eat it whole. whole. Eating fruit in its whole form is always going to be best, but. Nice, nice. Is there a lot of, in, in the countries that you were in, were there a, was there a large raw vegan community or even just a large vegan community? Um, 
In Mexico, I, I, I believe there's some people in the raw vegan movement here. I haven't met up with anybody as yet. Um, when I was in Vietnam, I met um, a couple of raw vegans um, just um, that passing through. Um, in Thailand, I met a lot. I lived in Thailand prior to living in Vietnam. There were a lot of vegans and raw vegans there. Chiang Mai was huge. I mean, look, life's not the same at the moment in countries. Um, so you're, we're obviously not getting the traffic, different traffic of people coming in that used to when I first left home five years ago. Um, but, yeah, in, in Vietnam, definitely there were raw vegans and vegans there. They have a lot of vegan restaurants throughout Vietnam because um, the Buddhists eat um, vegan food. So they, they call it chê. And um, there's a lot of chê restaurants everywhere. Any, any, like, meetups or anything like that? I mean, obviously not during the pandemic, but before. Yeah, I've met up with a lot of people. I mean, I haven't just, I've travelled throughout Southeast Asia and I've travelled to other parts of the world and people who I know online, like I've connected with, like that are, you know, as we, um, as I've come into the country, Chiang Mai was awesome for meetups. That was really good. Um, just vegans all the time everywhere or even if you didn't plan a meetup, you'd go into a local vegan restaurant and there'd be vegans there or someone would recommend recognize you from YouTube or whatever. So that was really great, really great to connect with people there. That's for sure. Great. Thank you. Here's a question, an important question we get a lot from Mandy. What is Jade's advice for bloating on a low fat raw vegan diet? Yeah, I used to have a lot of digestive issues um, myself. Uh, look, I don't know whether it's a myth or not. They do talk about food combining. And I think at first, if you do have digestive um, issues, just be mindful of um, how you mix your food. Like they say, look, have watermelon on an empty stomach. Um, you may, um, when you're first transitioning to even a vegan diet, um, like whole foods vegan diet, you may at first just get bloating because your body's not used to all that fiber coming into you, your stomach. So it is adjusting and that may cause you to um, bloat and then you just have to wait for your body to adjust but if you're prone to um, bloating as you change your diet and you clean up your diet and you lower your fat in your diet you'll find over time once you've got the influx of fiber and everything else coming into your body and you make sure you keep hydrated um, you'll find that the bloating will naturally go great thank you so what are you going to make for us today Okay, I'm going to make a raw apple pie. And to be honest with you, while I was setting this up, I thought, why did I call it a raw apple pie? Because it's kind of more taco-ish. Maybe I've just got tacos on the brain because I'm here in Mexico, but it is a raw apple pie. So um, I've got everything here. Just so you guys know, here's my little <laughs> setup. Um, I'm just going to keep it down a little bit, unless you want to see my head. Um, okay, so we're, what we're going to do, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to chop up some apples. Now, I've got five apples. They're not the greatest apples here in Mexico. Um, when I originally made this for my book, I made it in Vietnam, and they have great apples. They get them in from Australia, biased in my own country, but they are made in my own state, so I'm very biased with my apples. And we're going to chop them up. So we've chopped them up into little pieces there, just little cubed easy so that becomes that so easy now you can see how easy this is because i'm on my chair i'm sitting down and i'm in a really really confined space so the next thing we're going to do we're going to grab one to two apples now i grab two because these are really small and we're just going to take the core out and we are going to grab some medjool dates. So I've got some medjool dates. Now make sure, and we're going to soak them. Make sure you soak these in water probably for about five or six hours. You can see the way I squish it there. They're really soft. So we're going to take the seed out like that. Perfect. They're nice and soft so that you can blend them up well. So what we're going to do in a blender, we're going to put the apple, the cored apples. We're going to put the medjool dates. And I'm going to put a line. Now, I love these things. Um, I don't know if you guys have them, but this is how I squeeze my line. I got this in Vietnam. 
and it, it's going to come everywhere with me. So we squeeze the lime into, and we put these in the blender and we blend them up until it makes what I call an apple sauce. So as you can see, it's really pureed, just like baby food, really pureed, and it's really yummy, if I may say so myself. So what we're going to do, we've got the apples here, like this. We're going to mix in the apple sauce. And you can mix as little and as much as you like. It is so easy. This is why I like eating raw food because it's super easy and something like dates and apples are available everywhere in the world. So here we have it just like that, all mixed. So now I get, this is called my pie, but I don't know why we do this, raw vegans. We call things pies and whatever. I mean, it's lettuce. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is lettuce. You're hilarious. Oh, I just always laugh. I can't remember his name. There was a vegan and he it went viral. He did a video on a raw vegan pizza and he just served up a plate of cucumbers and I could not stop laughing. I'm like, how true? I mean, seriously, let's be real. It's, it's raw food. <laughs> that is funny. <laughs> okay. So we're just going to place these on the lettuce leaves like this. I love eating like this because the one thing I can't handle not having is crunch. Um, I used to be like a potato chip addict, cracker addict. Just I've noticed over here in Mexico, they love the crunch. They've got like the biggest aisle I've ever seen on chips and uh, crisps and taco shells and all that kind of stuff. So it's a big thing here in Mexico, the crunch. But that's why I use either lettuce and I love having apple and things like that because I like to crunch. So that's easy. Got that placed up like that. But because it doesn't look pretty, I add some strawberries. And because I don't know about you, AJ, but I eat with my eyes. I like everything to look pretty. I agree. Yeah. Very important. So we just chop up some strawberries. I must say the strawberries here in Mexico have been really nice. I haven't had good strawberries in years because Vietnam doesn't have them. Then I just get some alfalfa sprouts or microgreens and I just put that in to make, this is how I make sure that I'm getting extra vegetables, extra greens into my diet and look just like that. That is actually quite beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, and it's just so easy to, do, to make, like easy. And that would be a lunch. I would, I would, and I've still got some apple left. I would make more um, and I would sit there and I would make sure I ate all my lettuce. I generally do little tricky things <laughs> like put the lettuce on top and make it into a sandwich. I mean, I don't look like a lady when I eat. Um, so I do all sorts of things like that, but um it's, if I'm eating like this, I'm happy. I, I look at that. I don't look and say, oh, I feel deprived. I look and say, oh, wow, that's what I'm going to have. But if I sat here and I just had some apples and a date and a strawberry, I would love it. Don't get me wrong. I would love it. But this makes me feel like I'm having a proper meal, if that makes sense. Yeah. Well, Joe's saying it's more like apple tacos. That's what I reckon. I actually thought that this morning. You're right. You're 100% right. Anyway, the book's, the book's been uploaded into the bundle, so it's under apple pie. But I agree, it's a taco. Nice. Uh, <laughs> Ma Mandy says, what state in Australia do you live in? Um, South Australia. Um, so um, that's, that's a lucky state at the moment. Uh, Victoria and New South Wales are the states you've all see, seen on TV with the big lockdowns. Wow, Wait, here I saw another question. Da, 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 da. It was about uh, what your what is your favorite meal? Deb mm. Pepper wants to know what is your favorite fruit and what is your favorite meal? Okay, favorite fruit is peaches when they're ripe. Have to be good peaches, but that's my ultimate favorite favorite fruit. Um, or pineapple if they're super sweet and don't burn my tongue. Um, 
my ultimate favorite raw meal would definitely be like a raw walnut taco meat and again in the lettuce taco shells so yeah definitely like a raw taco meat or a, a raw burger if i've got my dehydrator or even better if someone makes it for me yeah absolutely <laughs> um, i was going to ask you do you do a lot of dehydrating I do, absolutely, but I left my dehydrator in Vietnam because um, I just, I've just i been living there for years and I've got so much stuff, but um, my son's still there, so I've left stuff with my son. Oh, nice. Did you have um, any weight issues before going raw vegan? Yeah, I've, I've yo-yoed up and down <laughs> all my life. Um, yeah, I've had weight issues for sure. Um, uh, and I've lost weight um, eating a raw vegan diet. Uh, if you, if I stick to 80, 10, 10, no problems. It just, it comes off. The minute the fat starts creeping back on, the weight will start creeping back on with it. But yeah, I, I lost about, I don't know what it is in uh, five. I, I do kilos. You guys do pounds. Um, I think I think 2.2 kilos is a pound if I'm, if you okay. tell me what it is in kilos and I'll, I'll convert it. I've lost about 15, 15 kilos as a raw vegan. Let's see. Anybody in, in the chat knows 15? I never learned the metric system. 15 kilos in pounds. That's 33 pounds. Yeah. So yeah, a fair, a fair bit, definitely. And look, if you, if you can start, if you stand this lifestyle and you're organized, and you plan ahead and you have your meals in order and you don't skip meals and don't end up getting triggered by binge eating and things like that. I mean, it's a big thing um, staying on track with any lifestyle. Um, you want to be successful. You've got to do the work with it. Um, you, de you can definitely keep your weight off and feel great. That's for sure. Yeah. Well, all the raw people I've been talking to, they've been very, very healthy and they love what they eat. So that's the main thing. I think I always tell people do the least restrictive version of the vegan diet you can do. That'll give you the results you're seeking. That's exactly right. And that's what I tell people too. It's about what you can do. I mean, people say, oh, I want to be hundred percent raw, but I just want to eat my potatoes. I'm like, well, you know, if that's where you're at, that's where you're at. Don't force yourself to do something because when you do, that's when you end up binging. I wanted to just share one more thing with you guys. Now, this little drink here, this is I when you soak your dates in the water. So once you take your dates out of the water, you'll get a real, it's like a sweet sugary syrup. Then if you add some lime into it, so you add the lime in, fresh lime, you have lemonade. And it's the best. And I love it. That's a great idea. Hmm. So that way you don't waste your date water. I, I really love that. <laughs> That's very clever. Well, you really get a lot of use out of your lime squeezer. Oh, my gosh. I love this. Well, I do because I've noticed here in Mexico, it's exactly the same as Vietnam. They don't have lemons. That's interesting. Yeah, now that I think about it, we just got back from teaching in Mexico and there were a lot, there, they had lemons, but the limes were a lot easier to get. And they were actually smaller too. Yeah, well, these ones that I've got at the moment, they're, yeah, I mean, it's squishy now, but yeah, they're relatively small, but um, they're good. They're, they're lovely limes here, but very hard to get lemons in these countries. So, yeah. lime it is. That's very interesting. Well, this was very fun. Do you like people to follow you on certain social media platforms? If people want more information on your work, where would be the best place to send them? Um, yeah, you can find me on my Instagram, which is JD Raw, which is at J A D E Y, and then Raw as in Raw. I, I have everything in the show notes, so it's, it should be clickable. But just at just where would you like us to go? Yeah, Instagram number one, um, and feel free to DM me. You can ask me any questions. And I also have a YouTube channel, um, Jade Talkless. And um, anyone's free to join any of my raw vegan groups online on Facebook. Oh, that's so great. Well, thank you. You just, uh, you, I'm so glad you're able to make this work for you in every single country. Because. <laughs>
That would we be try hard. our best. We try, we try our best. <laughs> I wonder, are there, are there, are there countries though that maybe it is harder to be raw? Like I, I'm not a world traveler, so I don't know, but are there certain countries that it might be more difficult for people? Like yesterday, Chris Kendall was in Sweden. Yeah. Uh, look, I think a lot of European countries, uh, countries may be um, a lot more expensive for produce. I know I was in Israel just before COVID broke out and um, it might have just been the place I was in. I was in the tourism area. I was in Jerusalem, but they had bananas for $25 a kilo. And I thought I would not be eating raw there. I would be getting out the rice. Very quick, smart. So, <laughs> yeah. Did you happen to connect with EFAT while you were in Israel? She's a, no. she's a raw foodist. She's been on the show. Oh, yeah, no, I didn't. Um, unfortunately, um, I did connect with a raw vegan over there and she was wonderful. Her name's Mattel. And um, she actually, because I said to her, I can't believe how expensive everything is. And she had somebody drive up from um, her city. It was an hour drive to Jerusalem and bring me grocery bags full of food. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful people you meet when you travel. Right. Well, you're doing it really well. And it's, yeah, it's actually, you know, in a way it's like, it, it can be a lot easier traveling raw. I mean, you know, if you're willing to eat simply. Yeah, it can be. Look, it has its moments. It has its moments. Um, believe me. Um, and I've had my moments traveling. It's not always easy, but I'm not like I was five years ago. I was like raw as law. Five years of traveling and backpacking and catching planes, trains, automobiles and everything you learn to relax a little bit in life. So <laughs> I'm not so stringent as I used to be. Nice. Well, Sarah Williams says, so exciting to see you here, Jade. So exciting to see you, Sarah. Thanks for watching. That is so nice. And Mandy didn't know about your, your YouTube channel. The link is right below in the show notes. You can click it. I checked it. Well, that's great. So yeah, maybe we should rename it Raw Vegan Apple Tacos. You never know. You, you can do that. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's let's do that because I really think more people would be interested in a taco than a pie. Yeah, well, I don't know. <laughs> I think so. Or, I, I think so. But I think I think that's great that you combine the vegetables with the fruit because in, in culinary school, whenever we had banana ice cream, we would always have celery with it and we would use the celery stock as our spoon. Yeah, that's yummy. I love that. I like celery with anything. My favorite one of my favorite things to eat is celery and dates and banana. So delicious. So with nice cream. Well, yeah, because you got you got sweet and salty together. That's right. It's so delicious. I mean, people who don't eat this way are probably going, oh my God, you guys are crazy. Is this serious? You gotta eat this, but no, seriously, it's, oh, good. it's, it's, it's good. Sounds, it sounds good. Crunchy, <laughs> sweet. And savory at the same time. Well, people are loving the raw apple uh, pie tacos for sure. They love the name. And uh, Jay just wrote a question in the chat. Uh, you might have covered this, but it's possible they joined late. Do you have a travel tip for eating raw? Bring dehydrated snacks. That's my travel tip. Yeah, uh, depends how long you're traveling for. If it's just quick trips, it's easy. Just pack some fruit in your bag. If it's long trips, um, don't be too hard on yourself. Do your best. Do the best you can. And um, things like dried fruit. I don't recommend eating dried fruit all the time, but if you are dead set on staying 100% raw, um, having dried fruits and stuff in your bag is a great way to keep your energy up. But then you've got to make sure you have water because it's quite dehydrating to the body along with flying on a plane at the same time. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, you know, fruit is often one thing you can get at airports, not a lot of variety, an apple, an orange or a banana, but I, I have seen fruit at an airport. Yeah, you, you can. And um, the Boost Juice um, smoothie bars. The problem is they don't quite fill you up. So <laughs> yeah, sometimes there'll be, a, there'll be a Jamba Juice sometimes at certain airports. So yeah, you could get a smoothie with some greens. So that's pretty good. But it's not yeah. like you're going to find greens or at an airport probably. Oh, unless it's on a burger, pretty much other than that, no. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Well, great. Well, thank you so much. It was so nice meeting you. And I hope that everyone checks out the raw vegan, ultimate raw vegan bundle and checks out your book because it's fabulous. Excellent. Thank you so much for having me, AJ. I really enjoyed it. And I'm glad somehow in my madness in my little place that I'm here in at Mexico, I, I managed to make it work. Well, if you make <laughs> it there, you can make it anywhere. Thanks so much, Jade. So nice to meet you.
And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back up until November 1st. We are going to have at least one, if not two, raw food vegans, low fat raw food vegans making recipes from their books from the Ultimate Raw Vegan Bundle. We have two shows tomorrow at odd times because we're trying to accommodate every time zone. So we actually have a 7 a.m. show and a 6 p.m. show, something we haven't done before because we're going all over the globe. And please come back in one hour for another show with Katrina Fox, where we talk about the vegan, the business of veganism. You might be able to write a new book, Jade, because you've been to so many countries. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. How to, how to stay raw vegan anywhere. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you.